I'm sick as a dog, but you want to learn how to find a basis for the column space of a matrix. So f it, let's do it. We're going to find a basis for the column space of this matrix A. In a previous lesson, we found a basis for the row space, and I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson. This is slightly more complicated, but it's not bad. First, we'll need to reduce the matrix to row echelon form. However, the column space of this reduced matrix may differ from the column space of the original, so there's a little more work we have to do. We have to identify the columns in the row echelon form that can contain the leading ones. Then, the corresponding columns of the original matrix will form a basis for its column space. So if in the row echelon form, say the second and fifth columns contain the leading ones, then it will be the second and fifth columns of our original matrix that form a basis for the column space. All right, here is our original matrix and the elementary row operations we perform to get it into row echelon form. I won't explain these all in detail. I assume you're comfortable with this process. I'll explain, say, just this step here to make sure my notation is clear. When we go from here to here, what we do is replace row 3 with row 3 minus two copies of row 1. So to go from here to here, we're subtracting two copies of row, row 1 from row 3. And in the end, we get this row echelon form. It's not reduced row echelon form, like this leading 1 isn't in a column of all zeros, which would be necessary for it to be reduced row echelon form. But we don't need reduced row echelon form to find a basis for the column space, so we can stop there. So now that we've got it in row echelon form, the second step is to identify the columns that contain the leading ones. The leading ones are in the first column, in the third column, and in the fifth column, right? You see all those leading ones, so those are our columns of interest. And we may choose to write those as such, C prime 1, C prime 3, and C prime 5, using primes here because these are column vectors from the echelon form matrix, not the original matrix A that we're interested in. But we now have sufficient information to find a basis for the column space of the original matrix. This is our original matrix A, and as we saw in the echelon form, it was the first, third, and fifth columns that contained the leading ones. Thus, it's the first, third, and fifth columns from our matrix A that will form a basis for the column space. And that's it. Once more, it's not the column vectors from the echelon form that make up a basis for the column space, but it's the corresponding columns in the original matrix. The first column from the echelon form matrix contained a leading one, so the first column from our original matrix will be part of the basis for the column space, and so on. That's how we get this basis for the column space. We can see that the dimension of the column space then is three because there are three vectors in the basis. So hopefully that was helpful. Once more, the steps are pretty simple. To find a basis for the column space of a matrix, reduce the matrix to echelon form, identify the columns in the echelon form that contain the leading ones, then the corresponding columns of the original matrix will form a basis for the column space. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Of reindeer to pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Hello. Is that okay?